mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar, Faster, Smarter MEP Layout. I'm Christine Grail, Content Marketing Manager for Leica Geosystems and the moderator for today's session. Our presenters today are Stanley Lawrence and Bradley Moore. Stan Lawrence is founder of Datum Tech Solutions and has more than 20 years of industry experience as a nationwide reseller of total stations and construction software. He's watched the changes in the industry and has positioned himself at the cutting edge of construction technology. During his years in the field, Stan learned that proper training is essential to getting the most out of any technology investment. At Datum Tech Solutions, Stanley trains clients one-on-one, -on -one, helping them become proficient in the ever-evolving field of BIM solutions while saving them time and money. Brad Moore is a BIM and VDC specialist with an architectural degree from the University of Florida. He is focused on AE design build processes with over 10 years of experience implementing workflow improvements in various facets of the building design and construction industry. As VDC manager for Power Design Incorporated, Brad has focused on helping the team take advantage of opportunities to streamline workflow of design, coordination, information management, installation methods, and as-built capture through adopting the powerful solution that point layout methods offer. Now, before we begin the presentation, I would like to give you a few tips. On the upper right side of your screen, you should see a widget bar. You can click on Help for an online technical FAQ if you need assistance. To make the slides larger, click the full screen button. If at any time you would like to ask a question, please enter it in the questions box. Our presenters welcome your questions and will address them later in the presentation. If we are unable to get you all of the questions in our live session, someone will reach out to you after the webinar by email. Now before we get started today, we do have a few quick polls we'd like to share just to give everyone a better idea of who is in the audience today. Our first poll is just to get a better handle on how many people are watching our webinar. I know there are some groups of people who are watching through a single login. We're just curious how many people are sitting here in a group today. If you could go ahead and answer that poll. Looks like we do have a couple of groups of maybe four and five people, so that's great. Good to know. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll out and share the results. And our next poll is how are you currently creating layout points today? Are you primarily using paper or field data collectors? Maybe you're using 2D software or Revit or perhaps another 3D software. Go ahead and take a second to answer that poll question for us. Looks like we have a lot of people on the line today that are using Revit or other 3D software. That's excellent. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and share those results. And quickly, we have just a couple more questions. This one is, what is your standard field layout process? Are you already using robotic total stations or perhaps manual total stations, or are you primarily using other methods? Looks like we have a lot of people in the audience today that are using robotic total stations, so that's excellent. You're already well on your way to an efficient process. I'm going to go ahead and share those results. And we have just one more quickly here, and that is, for those of you who are not yet using robotic total station, what has been the primary hurdle or hesitation? There's a lot of different reasons here. It looks like it's pretty evenly split across the board. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and share the results. And with that, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Stan. Thanks so much, everyone. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Stanley Lawrence. I'm the owner of Datum Tech Solutions. Uh, here at Datum Tech Solutions, we're a reseller of construction hardware and software. Um, we train on robotic total stations, point creation software, and Autodesk software as well. Uh, we focus on helping guide our clients down a right path for successful office-to-field process during construction. Um, during this process, Datum uh, Tech works hand-in-hand -hand with our clients to help streamline office workflows along with field installation and identify what the field personnel really need for the most efficient installation. Datum Tech believes that it is important for our clients to 
know both sides of the workflow, office and field. When we work uh, with a company, we focus on bringing both parties in a training uh, to make it a complete and successful overall training. Uh, Power Design is one of our electrical contractors. They're based out of St. Petersburg, Florida, and is an extremely successful or, and has extremely successful integrated in integrating the entire process. Power Design has been uh, a client of Datum Tech Solutions since they began integrating the robotic total station into their company. Uh, they have they have in the last two years been able to utilize the robotic total station on projects all over the country, all while operating out of one office. We have invited Power Design to give you an overview of their process and explain why they've had success with the robotic total station on so many projects. Now I want to introduce you and turn the meeting over to Brad Moore, the virtual construction manager at Power Design. Hi guys, I'm Brad Moore. I've uh, been with Power Design for about two and a half years now. Um, working as a virtual design manager for them and helping them uh, roll out several VDC processes as we kind of move through the industry and, and work our way through all these different advancements of them technology. A uh, little bit about power design, uh, full service engineering design build, uh, electrical firm. We handle power lighting, fire alarm, low voltage fixtures. We have our own fixture uh, warehouse in Atlanta, Georgia, and we also handle service and warranty for all of our products. Our main product type is multifamily and uh, commercial high-rise and uh, high-density projects. Um, we've been in business for 26 years. Right now operating in about 19 states, and we have over 150 active projects. Um, we do this all, all out of one office to uh, maintain consistency so that when we roll out uh, new platforms such as Point Layout, it's all coming from one, uh, one brain, one hub, one culture and uh, we're able to communicate and keep consistency throughout by doing so. So uh, just sort of a visual of, uh, you know, up to the projects that we've done over the last few years, uh, we call it the Power Design Skyline. Uh, mostly a lot of, lot of high-end residential, uh, condominiums, student housing, anything with a bed in it primarily is, uh, is what we're working on. Um, so let's just dive right into the, the workflow. So Typically, uh, what we're doing is we're participating in the 3D, uh, 2D, 3D coordination process. It really depends on how the project is started. Being a subcontractor, we get whatever comes down the line. This job was sort of a combination of 2D and 3D. Um, the architectural and structural were done in, in 3D. Um, some of the other trades were in 3D, some were in 2D. Um, in working in various platforms, AutoCAD and and Revit, um, we all got together, and Navis works to collaborate our process. So, typically, about you know, just to give you some visuals for our workflow, we're starting with the architectural structural layout. Uh, we'll go through and we'll start laying out our main distribution, lay out the equipment first. We'll put in some of our preferred routing for the the larger power components and some of the other larger uh, larger piping or conduit that's running through the building. Uh, then we have to identify that. And then we'll work through uh, with the MEP coordinator. Uh, that's usually the mechanical leading the the charge or the general contractor, depending upon who uh, who wants to take ownership of that. Uh, so we'll route our way all the way through the building, and once we've kind of gone through, and we'll really identify in stages, uh, level by level, uh, and try and lock down what we're trying to do through the building. And then we'll have to dimension that based off the of building control, and then we have to include all of our um, support systems as well for our branch and for our low voltage and for our fire uh, and we have to dimension it so this is a good picture of how dense that information can really get so we in order to deliver that out into the field we have to split that up into multiple sheets of information it can end up being between 30 and 40 pages sometimes but uh, there's at least two even just for one system you got to have the routing, and then you got to dimension it based off of control, and then we got to bring all that paper into this environment. Well, uh, there's a lot of challenges associated with that. Most of you already know the challenge of dealing with lots of paper, and we're all trying to move over to complete iPad solutions or tablet solutions as best we can. Uh, manual layout time uh, is much slower, uh, is, is pretty slow, 
and there's lots of labor costs that can be incurred with that. Most of the time it takes a team of guys to, to do a deck layout just for identifying the point. And on a deck, you know, we could have anywhere from 100 to 200 to 300 points. Sometimes on our high density projects, it could get up to 800 to 1,000 points depending upon the footprint of the building. Sometimes on our high density projects, the, the footprint can be a city block. Uh, there's varying sizes, high rises. Uh, smaller footprint, but still up to, you know, on average about 250 points, 300 points. Um, liability, uh, personal safety of your of your crew, uh, or your the, the safety of your personnel, rather, um, and not to mention the human error that can go along with the manual layout, uh, the rework that goes along with uh, human error. Try to mitigate that. There's opportunity to, to really uh, cut back on that with just getting the information straight from our design documentation given that we have the correct information at the time that the layout occurred. So um, other physical manual limitations, access to grid lines and control points to actually pull the tape. Um, and then as-built documentation, you know, a lot of times that happens after the fact. You got to go back after you're laying out and hope that you catch everything and changes that were made on the fly. So we decided, you know, given those challenges, um, those are about a handful of them, and those were actually the key areas that we decided we were going to take a stab at, uh, and if we could get the total stations and layout methods to solve. Uh, we recognized return on investment, uh, even in the pilot project, right away with the, without having a standardized workflow. Uh, the speed, you know, is way faster. Um, it seemed like we were going to be able to easily integrate it into our pre-construction processes. Um, we had, uh, it seemed like it was going to be a minimal learning curve. Uh, we introduced microsurvey as the field software. Um, it's a very user-friendly interface. It's in 2D. Guys are comfortable with looking at, at the 2D. Um, equipment is sustainable. Uh, you can use it from job to job as long as you take care of it and it doesn't fly off of a building, which we have had happen before. Thank you, Stan, for replacing that quickly. Um, the availability of technical support. The uh, Datum Sorry. Tech. Uh, Datum Tech has been uh, been great technical support for us and for for training our guys. And uh, he made that you know abundantly clear. Anytime we even had questions about how we were going to implement it, how we were going to pilot it, um, he was always there to have a, a quick response and always available. Um, we saw a potential to reallocate labor efforts if it really only took uh, one to two guys to, to do a layout rather than a crew of guys. That obviously gives you a chance to flex personnel in a different area. Uh, and obviously document consolidation uh, from tablet or from paper to tablet. So uh, the software that uh, would be required to do this um, Traditionally, we would just use the, you know, without using the, the layout method, we would just have AutoCAD or Revit uh, for our authoring document, uh, for our authoring platforms, and then use Navis to collaborate with our uh, other trades um, and participate in the collaboration process and coordination meetings. And uh, we decided to go with uh, the APL point layout for AutoCAD uh, initially, and we're still primarily uh, focusing on the AutoCAD application as far as generating points. Uh, and then we take that and we export that to microsurvey uh, in the field. That's the, the field personnel who are going to be operating that particular piece of software. And then uh, at the moment, and correct me if I'm wrong, Stan, I think we're still using the Leica Icon Robot 50. Uh, that is we have the Okay, I believe this is the most current one. Stan is always uh, keeping us abreast of the, the latest releases from uh, from Leica as well. And then the guys are going to need a tripod, prism pole, and bipod uh, to support using uh, the other pieces of equipment that are out in the field. So this is pretty much the total package of, of what we're using. If you had to go, uh, you could probably eliminate the use of Revit and Navisworks for the coordination process and just use CAD and uh, APL add-in, and then transfer out to microsurvey or whatever uh, platform you chose to use for your total, uh, for your, uh, your data collector, and then uh, the equipment, obviously. And we'll get into equipment selection a little bit later on. 
So what this allows us to do is take this dense amount of information that we have here, and really what we're after is this. If you're just looking at a picture of what you're after, it's this minus all the text and the you know, wording and all the other information that you're, that you're after. We were really able to condense this information, and the guys out in the field, as far as what they're laying out specifically, are the points. Uh, for us, it's conduit running through the deck uh, that is embedded in the concrete that's either going to be stubbing up or stubbing down into the program of the floor space below. Um, coming up from, you know, if we're doing a slab, stuff coming through from the deep underground penetrating through, and sometimes we even handle it for our overhead uh, situations. And in the deep ground, deep underground situations, there's varying uh, elevations that it can capture as well if you needed to. So you can work on all XYZ axes if you needed to. So what we do is what happens is you extract those points into a CSV file, which is an Excel format, and then that in turn gets uh, imported into microsurvey into the field. This is, uh, you also need to export the background as well in a DXF format. Uh, you import the points. Uh, this is sort of the vanilla version of what we get imported. Uh, just be a, a a crosshair with a, with a number associated with it, with a point number associated with it. Um, then we wanted to add, figure out ways to add a little bit extra detail to our drawing. So what if we could add the routing to it? Um, we put that in DXF format as well, and it comes in in color, which is nice. Uh, we've, you know, working with uh, the auto map has been really key because we're able to take our standards. Uh, from in-house and then directly translate that into the drawing. Now, that advanced level of detail that you see here um, really is all the guys need out in the field to help identify you know, a point and communicate back if they're moving a point or not. Um, and then what they actually need to see uh, you know, or, or find out is what system it's on, uh, whatever, whatever other kind of information we need to embed, the size of the conduit, uh, whether it's going up or down, uh, but really when they're looking at it, they have the ability to toggle on and off that kind of information, and most of the time when they're doing a layout, they're just going to be looking at a screen with this with this level of detail on it. Um, you know, as far as, uh, as far as how they're working out there, I think Stan, um, if you want to talk a little bit about what actually is needed uh, in the field when they're, when they're looking at this and doing their point layout. Yeah, so so when they're when they're out in the field, the biggest thing is is everybody that's out there running the equipment, they tend to uh, be intimidated by technology um, in the beginning. Um, so utilizing these features of use of the background drawing, uh, putting in the routing, they can still relate back to their paper set of drawings um, that they have it in the beginning, so that so that they're not completely changing the wheel, but this, this allows them to quickly see the items that need to be staked out in the field uh, in a very organized fashion. It's all on one drawing. You have the full background. It's going to guide you where you're at. Um, you can also quantify. So if you're going to the field, you can count up how many blocks you have uh, of green. And in this particular, that's, that's their boxes. So um, they could count up quantities so that they go out and install. Uh, when they install the object, they're actually being able to see the routing as well. So when they place that point, they're drawing the two directions or a direction that the incoming line is coming from. So it really makes the installation process um, uh, really streamlined. And then also uh, viewing it with this auto map uh, and all the colors for the routing, it, it makes it less intimidating because they're not trying to match a number uh, on one sheet to another sheet, um, they're, they're actually just getting a quick little visual. Once you select a point, it tells you where to go on the screen. So, so it's, it really becomes um, a, a very simple process uh, for the users in the field. So a um, little bit about how we actually implemented this workflow. Uh, you know, if I were to break this into phases, we really needed to pilot and develop it, right? So, again, Stan was instrumental in, in helping us figure out what the capabilities of, uh, of point layout of the APL add-in really were. Um, and then 
really try to figure out what the redundancies in our workflow uh, that we could grab onto in terms of, you know, in-house in the pre-construction department, um, creating these installation drawings. We, we spend a lot of time creating dimension drawings, you know, so that's by hand, and then not to mention the by hand tape measuring that's done out in the field. Um, and then how to really maximize our results through uh, how we were going to execute. So how we were going to deliver this to the field, how we were going to communicate with our team. Um, you know, but we needed to really look at grabbing all those opportunities and then figuring out how to, how to standardize it. So um, that actually really wasn't a, a super painful process because uh, we're, you're able to use our pre-existing uh, li block library. Uh, our system colors and naming conventions were pretty much the same, but it really kind of gave us the chance to increase the level of detail that, that we wanted to improve that if you were to try to, you know, with electrical content include on your drawings, it would just end up cluttering and becoming very heavy. So again, it just gives you the opportunity to embed and really uh, consolidate and organize the, the amount of information you're putting in one place. Uh, and then we had to figure out, you know, what's the best way to communicate with our field, um, you know, whether we were going to use uh, the email connected directly to the data collectors or if we were going to send, you know, send stuff directly to our supers, but that was all things that we really needed to talk about. Um, but going from, uh, you know, piloting and standardizing to creating user buy-in, uh, it was very critical that we had the, the, pilot, the piloting, everything developed. Uh, and standardized before we actually rolled out to try and present it to our users, not to mention, uh, you know, our you know our executive staff and our project managers who are going to be buying uh, this really expensive piece of equipment. You know, it needed to run smoothly, so uh, we needed to figure out a way to help realize the return on investment early. We really needed to instill trust, uh, you know, in the equipment and in the software and in the process with our primarily our superintendents. Uh, out in the field are, are the key guys that need to see it working because we can think and train anybody how to do it uh, and our you know and microsurvey I said as I said before is a really easy program but they need to know that it's reliable um, and that we're able to clearly communicate uh, with everybody on the team when something's not functioning properly because you know the guys got to move forward in the field and they got they got to get it done and the easy thing to do is just put it to the side and go back to what you already know um, so taking it from there and then also figuring out how to use it for design validation and installation validation as well, um, just showing the value uh, across the board, not only to, you know, the higher level executives uh, in, your, in your firm, but also to the end users as well that they can trust it and they can move forward with it. So um, in order to do that, uh, to increase that, we had to train and support. Um, Stan spent a bit, good amount of time with the guys out there, and I'm going to let him talk a little bit about um, what infield training is like. Yeah, so in-field training, uh, most of the time whenever we get out to a project, um, we do a two-day training uh, that covers the data transfer side, that, that uh, it covers the uh, use of the equipment. Um, we usually recommend um, smaller groups, so we, you know, three to four guys is perfect. Um, that way they can communicate and learn together uh, even after the training. Um, but usually what we say is by the end of two days, uh, they're proficient with the equipment. Uh, they're able to get out and run and understand um, the equipment. Uh, you know, because during our training, when we work with the equipment, we give the complete basics of how to run the equipment. So the overall setup, um, and, and a lot of people that run this equipment, if they've run it before or not, um, they need to understand the true parts of the equipment, how long it should take you to set up the equipment. Uh, I think a pretty standard for most people around the country is um, a good 20, 20, 25 minutes set up, setting up the equipment. And we like to reduce that number down to, you know, five minutes. Um, we have plenty of users uh, that do five minutes or less to set up the equipment. So just in our, our teaching alone, we, we bring them the confidence to uh, work with that uh, equipment uh, and it makes it less intimidating and, and less worried about steps because we, we have all the steps written down for the users uh, step by step. It, it makes it, uh, it gives them a source to go back on. Um, working with the software, we, we, pe uh, we teach <laughs> uh, rinse and repeat. 
um, all of our steps. We walk you through step by step how to do things and then we back you all the way out and walk you right through it again and then we make the users teach other users. Um, so we make that uh, we make that training pretty um, uh, pretty stable for each person, um, just essentially building um, confidence between uh, hardware to software, data transfer, and field use. Um, and then again, uh, final thing, build office to field rapport. Um, that bringing the field guys and the office guys together for our training is, is important. Um, as you can see in the back of this picture here, we've got one of the superintendents in the background uh, just over the shoulder looking at what they're doing uh, and, and the deck form in there with a couple of the layout guys. Um, we, we really want to bring everybody together for that training so that, so that uh, everybody gains confidence in the equipment. Um, and then after that we move on to uh, working with the quality control. Um, you know, the every time you get on a job site, you need some sort of control. Um, there are different fashions of uh, control, whether you're making it up your own because there's none supplied by the GC or there's information uh, supplied by the GC and they're using that uh, to set up their equipment. Um, you, using this equipment, we're able to verify all the information uh, immediately and go out to the field and set up a project successful. Like, uh, this training here, these guys, um, we did have extra equipment, so we were training on multiple systems on the same job site. Um, out of this group, we had quite a few rock stars that are actually out running their own projects um, that, uh, you know, right after this training went out, a uh, couple of online support calls, um, you know, phone calls, but overall, uh, we, we ended up developing quite a few um, power design guys that are that are out running each each job there and uh, this this project was actually in southern Florida so very successful go ahead Brad you want to so, jump back in? yep so we're uh, going to talk a little bit about the results now um, so for us uh, we'll talk about positive impacts on, on the pre-construction department first uh, again as I mentioned um, it was it was very easy to embed into our, our standard design slash shop drawing creation workflow. Um, again, you, using the API, you, you we're, we're marking our blocks uh, when you run the software, and then you select you know your window, and you select all of your blocks, and then it marks it at the insertion point. Well, having all that content created and that being what we snapped to and we dimensioned already. Um, you know, it was, it was very easy. All we had to do was just sort of embed another level, another layer of detail uh, in, into our blocks and into our block uh, identification and information so that it just sort of picked up on that right away. Um, it simplified the workflow for us because we don't have to create dimension pages anymore or additional supplemental information as far as like enlargements, uh, dimension enlargement plans and figuring out how what we're going to dimension to in an enlargement or, uh, you know, just, just the whole dimensioning process, and you know, by ha by hand, is very time consuming to do 800 points on a on a piece of paper. Not to mention, it gets extremely cluttered. Um, and then, in addition to that, whether we want to use it or not, uh, our workflow is exactly the same. All we do is just create the dimension page, or we don't create the dimension page. Uh, either way, I can extract points from our exact same set of documentation without our without our guys having to change the workflow at all. Uh, intelligent information management. So uh, the auto map was was definitely key uh, using that microsurvey feature. Um, they can look at a symbol, you know, on the background or for the for a point when they when we upload it, and they know whether it's a deck box down or up, conduit down or up, or whether it's a a telecom device. Uh, there's a a good amount of symbols that you could use to sort of spread out um, the different types of systems that you're trying to capture, and then from there, it's all about uh, you know we use coloring and and all kinds of other stuff to really break up our our definitions for things. So it becomes second nature to the guys uh, as they're looking at it and it, they know what it means automatically. Um, we are able to give them uh, actionable information directly from our CAD files or from our Revit models. Um, the APL workflow that we're using to plug into MicroSurvey is directly from AutoCAD. So if we're starting with Revit, we have to convert to CAD and then plug over. Um, 
but uh, you know it's it's coming directly from what we're producing our documentation from. Uh, so they will, you know, be working with basically the most current version. If we want to make a, an adjustment, uh, we will adjust it in our live file. We don't have to do it in two or three different places. We'll just do it right there on our active working drawing. Send it out to them. If they want to make a, a couple of, of changes to their to their points out in the field, we'll bring it back in and, and bring in the adjusted points, and then we'll have to adjust in our drawings uh, in AutoCAD manually. Uh, Glue will do it automatically. Um, if you are trying to capture your as built, we can we can do that as we're installing them. Uh, that's definitely a big help, a big big help because uh, rather than going back and trying to remember what was deviated, what was not, we tried to capture it on our you know as before our layout and uh, execute accordingly. And most of the time we're catching it, but there may be instances where we forget to write it down on paper. The super forgets to write it down on paper, so it's definitely been very key. I'm going to let uh, Stan talk a little bit about about accuracy in the field, especially since he comes from a surveying background. He has uh, he knows what the the challenges and the environment in the field uh, present when you're actually trying to capture all this stuff. So um, a lot of a lot of this uh, equipment is just making sure that we're actually building what we designed. We spend all the efforts in the field. Doing, you know, getting getting the equipment placed where it should be. But if we're not utilizing the latest greatest tools to do this, um, it really makes a struggle. We end up going back to our, our we're utilizing a tape measure um, and sometimes rotating lasers if you're if you're increasing your uh, technology there from the old methods. Um, but pulling uh, a tape measure. Going out, establishing grid or finding grid lines, and and reading a set of drawings um, back and forth tends to uh, cause error. Um, you're going to end up having to uh, lay out an object one way for a northing, and then switch and go to an easting and pull another dimension just to lay out one point. Um, not only that. Uh, waiting for grid lines from the GC, uh, and I'm I'm using that term. Uh, loosely just normally we're waiting for control from somebody but um, for for the MEP side there it is usually coming from the general contractor or a layout crew that is um, hired by the con by the GC to place grid lines down um, so there's no more waiting on that we can help set up control and establish a project uh, on control like in this picture these guys are actually using one of the buildings near them as a control point um, and there, there are grid lines in the background, as you can see down on the deck, but they're utilizing the same control points on every single floor, um, which just makes their, uh, their project from floor to floor even more accurate um, because they were able to utilize the same information every time. Um, this also provides checks and balances for the job site for all subs. Um, you're able to see the background of the walls, the columns, and when you go to place your point, um, it should be, you know, your boxes should be a couple inches off the face of column, and you're able to go out and place it. You see the column there. Um, the object goes where it should, and it looks just like it should in the background. Um, if you have any questions, you can just view in, zoom in on your drawings, and you'll see um, where that lies. You can actually snap dimensions from from an edge of a column and a wall as well to pull a tape measure in the field to just kind of verify that your point laid out in the field uh, exactly like uh, how it should be. Uh, gains confidence for the user as well in the beginning to essentially double check. Uh, a lot of the times the deck foreman um, will end up following behind and uh, running a tape measure on their set of drawings after the layout crew has gone through and done theirs and that kind of helps um, check everything and also build that confidence once again um, because utilizing this total station the, the biggest thing is is we need to remove human error um, from the installation uh, it's it happens but this equipment you are literally following it right where it tells you where to go um, when you store it if you're storing outside of your tolerance it actually gives you an error and tells you that you're not storing it in the right location so you can set that tolerance um, and that, yeah, that's that's pretty much it on that. Um, you want to jump on to the next one, Brad? Sure, yeah. Um, so, 
you know, piggybacking on the not only you know not only the accuracy that definitely helps with the productivity when you can rely on everything being 100% accurate. Um, not to mention the software interface and and your ability to check off, you know, check off point. Say, yep, it's it's done. On to the next one. The transfer from point to point is is usually pretty quick. The the processors and the and the Leica data collectors are usually uh, they don't they don't take too long to check off and move on to the next one. They don't really ever bug out on us too much, which is good. But definitely being able to do that, just check off a box, walk over to the next one a couple of feet away, rather than pull two sets of tapes and have a crew of guys doing it. Um, you know, is, is is invaluable. Well, it definitely uh, definitely helps. I mean, our superintendents. Uh, have have reported that there's just been tremendous gains in productivity out in the field. Um, one of a couple of our projects has said they've gotten up to 800 points in a day. Um, and booking it in a traditional way would probably be able to do about 100 points in a day. Uh, and it would take, uh, you know, a, a team of guys to do that. So, uh, you know, that's where the personnel, uh, the, the the decrease in the number of personnel needed as uh, needed as well as the the productivity and the speed that's gained. Uh, seen right there, uh, and then again, uh, being able to reallocate your resources, your labor resources, to, to handle other areas um, when you're not covering the deck basically with with more bodies, uh, and then you can just go focus on on uh, more concentrated areas that you're trying to that you're trying to get done quickly. Uh, it gives us more responsiveness uh, just in general on the job site if the GC comes at comes at us and wants us to kind of change our, our, our plan or our routine for the day. Uh, we have that agility um, physically as well as being able to adapt to documentation. Uh, there's changes that come out last minute, uh, sometimes the day of, that we're supposed to lay stuff out in the field. Um, you know, being able to work with this kind of, uh, with this, with this kind of technology allows us to, to move faster and change directions quicker. Um, that's been real nice. Uh, so, how does it how does it an advantage to the owner? Um, the quality of the installation, knowing everything is 100% where it needs to be. Um, you know, being able to respond to the customer's needs. Uh, we work in a lot of high-end residential pro uh, projects that are multi-million dollar condos. Uh, we have con we have change orders that come out constantly, and we need to be able to adapt to that. That are not necessarily individual dwelling units. Sometimes it's you know, a whole series of typical units that will affect an entire layout of a of a floor or a level. Um, being able to let your your owner know that you have he has another level of checks and balances on his job, uh, definitely uh, some some another layer of uh, comfort that you can add and, and satisfaction that you can have have in his in his product. Um, the being able to increase the level of uh, as built documentation, the quality of that. Um, Stan can probably tell you more <laughs> more of what it costs to charge a surveyor to come and as built uh, uh, you know, survey your building, but uh, being able to capture that information on the fly and giving him a better deliverable uh, is another advantage that you can tell your owner about. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty expensive uh, uh, bill jumping into that. Uh, normally, surveyors are 100 plus on up to 175 bucks an hour uh, doing that, so. Uh, right here, this is the current workflow we have. Uh, this is just what it looks like uh, on a round trip for you guys, so uh, production layout workflow. Um, we're going to add points. Uh, starting at number one, we just add points in our in our software, whichever Autodesk product you're using or if you're using point prep uh, or building link, you just create your points, um, ex export them out. You're going to go right into uh, the data transfer, um, and that'll be uh, your data collector, right there we have it as, uh, you know, you, there's icon software, there's um, currently microsurvey is what um, Power Design is using, and then uh, so you got your data transfer, and then once you have your information transferred to there, you're going to take it right out to the field, connect to the total station, and lay out. So you're build, building directly from the model, um, and then you're going to, uh, um, after you've placed the object in the field, you'll be able to go ahead and take check shots uh, on it, and then go back to the office, verify the information was placed in the right spot. The as-built locations are also uh, added in there. And uh, then you'll import it back into your drawing and run a deviation report. Um, that just ensuring that everything is a complete workflow and everything was installed properly. And then 
moving forward, um, a lot of the general contractors um, and a lot of the subs are starting to move this direction. This is what's what's coming next, which is the uh, utilizing the iPad. Um, this workflow is just a touch different. You do um, there is an Autodesk subscription that you need to have, which is the BIM 360. Uh, glue package uh, subscription and you're going to uh, you'll be able to utilize Autodesk Point Layout with Revit, Navisworks and AutoCAD. Um, you'll create your information in in that uh, software uh, utilizing the Autodesk Point Layout then you'll um, instead of doing a data transfer you're going to go to your iPad and you're going to just drag, drag down and sync um, over Wi-Fi and then from there you're going to take that information out to the field um, turn on your total station which is um, it has a Wi-Fi handle um, that accesses its own Wi-Fi system, so you'll just drag down and sync into that or lock into that Wi-Fi, and then be able to lay out from there. Um, from that, you'll be doing layout. You'll take a couple of check shots, your as-built shots, um, and go back to the office, uh, connect to Wi-Fi, drag down and sync on your tablet and then that'll update the model and you'll be able to see your deviation report once again. So that is, that's the workflow use, utilizing the uh, iPad um, and that's the direction more, a lot of people are moving towards, especially the general contractors um, and subcontractors are following right, right in that path as well. This is what it looks like just on the iPad side. Um, so download models, um, you're going to just open up the iPad app and then you'll have my download models and you'll just simply drag down and it will, uh, you'll see a little syncing thing uh, in there. So all these models in here are already on my iPad, as you can tell. Um, but the other ones you would just simply uh, click and double click and download. Uh, the Total Station software works virtually the same. Um, you're selecting a point in the drawing that is a control point, as you can kind of see those legs there uh, where my Total Station is set up. And then we have a point on the edge of the footing. It was a control point that was uh, placed. Uh, so we utilize that. Um, and the second you take your shot, um, you're, you're off and running. And also in the upper right-hand side, you can see the deviation where it says away, left, uh, Z, and collect. That just allows you to verify the information going to a point. Um, so you get the correct information if the control point's in the right spot or if you're verifying any information, it's just going to guide you right in there and say go in four feet, go left four feet, um, and then you know give you an elevation. So that one says that it's a quarter inch high. Um, just kind of seeing that. So um, from there, uh, utilizing those particular systems, um, we've we've seen great success in uh, catching mistakes on a project. Uh, there's been quite a few of them that we tend to find and. A lot of you guys may have may be able to relate, but usually when we go out to a project immediately, we're doing that QAQC stuff. Um, we're seeing the information that was supplied in the model, and we're going to the field and verifying the information that's there. And ultimately, the way we like to teach people is, is that they're actually verifying everything. They're not really laying out for the first time because mostly most mistakes happen when you, you are creating the wheel somebody else comes in behind you and that's when you find your mistake. So the field personnel tend to understand that they're going out there, they're seeing the wall, the point is going next to the wall, um, and if the wall is not there then we see a mistake. Um, we've done projects all over the country. One of them, Power Design in Texas, we were able to go out to a project. It was uh, first time bringing a total station onto their project um, and the uh, grid lines were placed in the wrong spot and unfortunately so was the rest of the the edge of the building. Um, it was a mistake that had gone on simply because nobody was utilizing equipment like this. Um, so unfortunately that building um, they ended up having to take down and start over. Um, we've also had other buildings where um, slight rotation has been on the drawings but when you go to the field uh, there was no rotation or vice versa. Uh, we're able to catch those mistakes um, during that process uh, on several other projects uh, dealing with that too, just being able to set up and shoot their control points, go over and shoot the building uh, or shoot out to the property corners that the surveyor supplied. All that information 
is already in the data collector to verify. So when they when they're going out there, their confidence level um, usually is captured right after we catch a mistake uh, running the equipment. And and this even goes all the way back to placing an object on the deck with a tape measure. Um, almost every single project we do a training on that is not utilizing a total station, when we go out there on site, we catch spots that have mistakes. Um, and that, that includes um, whether it's, if you're on the electrical side, it's a floor box. If you're on a plumbing side, it's, it's a sleeve. Um, and, you know, uh, shear walls have been in the wrong spot, but we've been able to catch those mistakes while utilizing this equipment, uh, which is key because now we are minimizing all of our rework that we previously had. So no more core drilling. Um, as long as it's designed right and placed in the drawing correctly, when it goes to the field, it's actually placed in the correct spot, um, which is key, which is key. Um, I think I've pretty much touched base on the majority of it that I'd like to talk. Yeah, next. Yeah, at this point, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. And um, we do have some questions that have come in from the audience. I think a big question that a lot of people are wondering about is how did Power Design evaluate the various technologies when the company first began looking at digital layout and what criteria factored into your decision making process? Brad, would you be willing to share some of those insights with us? Sure. Um, in, in the beginning when, uh, when we first started taking a look at this technology, um, you know, we were looking at, uh, you know, Autodesk Point Layout was uh, owned by a, by a subsidiary and then Autodesk purchased them and then we started looking at one, one workflow and then we were worried about how that was going to transfer over to the Autodesk platform uh, and then, you know, we were mostly focused, focused on the, the preliminary pilot phase uh, and then, you know, Stan was, you know, we were working with him and we were working with a different set of, uh, set of equipment uh, pieces that were out there. Uh, and then we, as we moved on and advanced, uh, you know, using this technology in the field, we started noticing there's, you know, obviously more than one brand out there, which we knew before, but we thought, well, let's do our homework. And then Stan was uh, good enough to bring us, uh, bring our attention to Leica as well, but we put it through uh, basically this checklist that you see here, dealing with portability, durability, reliability, you know, how accurate it is, how quickly is it, uh, is the tech, is the software going to operate, is the, you know, how reliable is the machinery itself. Um, obviously cost is part of it, uh, what kind of support we were going to get, what kind of additional features is the technology actually developing or are they just sort of, uh, you know, the, the last time they developed it was a bunch of years ago, but certainly uh, reliability, um, you know, meaning, you know, how, how well can, can we break down and, and, and work, uh, you know, with the, the different environments that we were going to be in, you know, we're in hot, we're in cold. Um, you know, durability, uh, we had talked about, we looked at IP ratings, which is more based on like kind of water protection and, and things like that, but how well does the software, um, the processors work in the softwares as well, but those were some of the big key items. Now, um, we had that poll question at the very beginning of the webinar about challenges in adopting that digital layout workflow and one of those was obviously getting buy-in from management. With this chart that you guys developed, did you end up developing this ahead of time and taking this to power design management to get them to buy into this solution and then are you continuing to kind of measure against these criteria as you um, have begun working with this whole solution? Well, it was definitely both. Uh, in the beginning, it was definitely trial and error trying to figure out what we could rely on, what was uh, what was credible, and what were you know just identifying these key uh, items uh, that we were going to measure against, and we definitely use this as a benchmark moving forward. Um, you know, in addition to this, it's, this is specifically for equipment, but we also uh, have developed benchmarks for our our personnel, uh, how well they're performing, and how well we're using it in the field, and what workflows work best. But uh, definitely utilizing a checklist uh, like this as, as something ongoing, and if uh, you know, it's certainly something that would help uh, when talking to the, the people that are going to be purchasing. 
Sure, that makes sense. Now we have a couple questions here about the auto map that you showed on the microsurvey software. The first question is whether you can import the symbol map from Revit into microsurvey. Yes, uh, that is. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say yes. That is actually the same exact. Um, you can transfer that auto map um, from user to user on Revit. It's just a simple Excel file. It does not change the symbol in Revit for your points, though. That's something to be aware of. But it that that auto map feature is strictly for the user in the field uh, to gain confidence, to be able to organize and manage, just like you guys, uh, just like the office staff does. Um, with their layer management, um, it just allows them that extra uh, bit, of, bit of filter uh, options and customization. Well, and I think you just answered this next question. But I'll go ahead and ask it. The auto map view that you showed during the webinar, is that located on the data collector or on the computer workstation? It sounds like that's on the data collector in the field, correct? It, well, we, so, can, we can use it on, on both. Microsurvey is, uh, is, a, is something that can be used, and it has to be on a, window, on, a, uh, uh, on a Windows-based platform, correct? I don't think you can use it on a Mac. Or... Yep. And you can create your auto map either in an Autodesk software. You can create the auto map in Point Prep software, which is another Leica product, Microsurvey uh, Point Prep, or you can create those symbols on the tablet in the field for the user. And it is solely governed by the description. So whatever the description is, you can you can essentially categorize it uh, for any time you ever use that description in the future. That will always look like that object on the field or on the data collector. I apologize. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And someone here is wondering if they already have a subscription to that BIM 360 glue. They're using it on projects, um, and they have seats from the general contractor. Um, can they go ahead and use that BIM 360 point layout under the enterprise license, or does it require a separate license? Do you know the answer to that, Stan? I believe it requires a separate license, but I would say email me, and I will uh, respond to that um, with, um, with actually an uh, Autodesk um, reseller uh, that is more familiar with that actual uh, project workflow. That makes sense. Okay. Brad, from your perspective, is there anything that has been surprising to you as you've moved forward into this process? It sounds like certainly the productivity numbers are very impressive, the speed, um, the accuracy, but is there anything that really stands out in your mind as, um, as just making this whole thing worth it? Um, well, I'd, I'd definitely say it's another level or layer of communication that, uh, in engaging the field, which is always good. Um, it's not just, you know, I mean, before we were, we were shipping off, off drawings and, you know, we're still, we're still sending out drawings and having dialogue over the drawings, but I think this is just another way to, like, plug in closer to real time uh, to what's happening on the job site, and that's been uh, pretty refreshing. Uh, it's, been, it's been nice because it's just, uh, just another way to develop rapport with your team when you don't get to see them face-to-face -face all the time. Sure. And with the move toward BIM, that building information modeling, um, I don't know, does Power Design consider this a step toward BIM? Are you guys actively implementing BIM? Or is this just a, a common sense move? Uh, well, it, it's one, it was at first just a common sense move because it really just, you know, for the productivity sake of working in 2D. But, I mean, we do work with BIM, uh, whether it be in Revit or AutoCAD or, you know, any other kind of 3D generative software. Um, it's, it's, you know, definitely using using Revit and using uh, other of these uh, advancements that Autodesk is using either in the 360 platforms and in the 360 world that, uh, that they're coming out with is definitely something that we're preparing uh, and making moves toward the tours because it's not only in just this uh, the execution process, but it's the the collaboration and communication process, not just with the with the GC and the other trades, but internally as well. Sure, and I would think you know a lot of the benefits that you're seeing are benefits for power design and kind of behind the scenes. But I would think that as you work with owners and and your clients on this, that they're recognizing the value as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would, uh, I would, I would definitely say that, uh, you know, being able to have that responsiveness to them and being able to give them what they want quicker is something that uh, 
that every owner wants, right? <laughs> but uh, but also definitely being able to just just increase the quality in whatever way we can has uh, has definitely been top priority. Yeah, and I I, w I would second that. Uh, you know, and the general contractors just themselves working with subcontractors. Um, going around it, most of our business is, it's all referral, so um, we always hear both sides from, from people, but like it, it has become, when we go out to projects, it's like, well, they didn't have a choice. We need them to run this equipment because it proves itself out. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, putting, putting something in the field uh, with the old methods, just, it just doesn't work anymore. Um, everybody's moving with the electronic set however that pos however possible um, they want that on their job sites as well it makes a lot of sense certainly raising the expectations in the field that is all the time that we have for today for more information about the solutions discussed in today's presentation please contact Stan or Brad directly or visit bimlearningcenter.com as you exit today's webinar, please take a few moments to complete the survey that should pop up on your screen. We appreciate your time and hope that you found this webinar to be a valuable experience. Thank you so much.